Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here on our Patreon channel, Israeli News Live. And uh, <clears throat> this is just more information that I keep stumbling across. And I have to honestly say stumbling across it because uh, it's on the fallen angels where they're imprisoned and, uh, and plus a little bit more information. Uh, I did this video six years ago. The fallen angels in prison in Antarctica are and are still alive. And... Uh, Boy, that's, I sit there and look at myself there and I'm like, wow, boy, I have certainly turned gray since then, right? The whole top of my head's gray, all my beard and mustache is all gray now, so six years has definitely taken a toll. Um, but anyway, uh, there's over a million views in the last six years on this video here, and it's actually over on Fact News, News Network as well, about a million views over there. And at one point, it was taken down here on Israeli News Live. So we finally were able to get it back up. Uh, don't know the actual real number of views, but it doesn't matter. But a lot of people like the information in this. And today, I ran across, I was doing the study for the teaching I posted on Israeli News Live. Uh, actually, I'll probably post that on the Noon Institute as well. But um, as we go into this uh, Passover weekend, uh, the time that our, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ died, and uh, but he rose again. And that's the beautiful part that we're about to uh, remember as well. But uh, in, in the process of doing it, there was a very interesting Hebrew word that I did a search for in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And I specifically searched only the Dead Sea Scrolls, um, uh, or the Hebrew word in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And when I did... It brought me to this particular passage here. This is in, uh, let's see, if you want it, the fragment number. It is, oh gosh, do I have an even on here? I don't. Uh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, Enoch is where it's at. 88.3 and 88 through 88, 89.6. But, uh, um, but specifically, I'm going to be looking at, um, let's see, what part did I want to look at with you guys? Yeah, right here. Verse 21 was one of the main ones here, but uh, and that's in fragment number four. And but we're going to look at the look at it as as a whole. And uh, and we look at fragment number four. Let me back up real quick here. One of the things that it does uh, it talks about uh, from the north, uh, which by the word the word north is the word hidden. Uh, Avudin uh, Yabad Bin. The word Avudin is the works. It's pluralized. And those of you that maybe you do study Hebrew, uh, in, in, in old Hebrew, 2,000 plus years ago, uh, the pluralization of a word was used with a, a, a noon, the letter noon, not the letter mim. Uh, I mean, you do find a mim as well, but. It is very common to pluralize with the letter noon versus the letter mem, or mem sofit or noon sofit, the final noon or the final mem. And so this one here is speaking about, as we can see in the English translation, that, oh, wrong way, let's see here. From there I was conveyed to the north of the edges of the earth, and I was shown great works. Um, and when he speaks about going to that north edge there. Uh, again, <clears throat> the word that is used is the word for hidden. That's always been the word north of, in Hebrew. In fact, let me just see if I can see if I can pop that up. Let me just see. Let's see. I don't have it up there, but I'll put it up here just for you. Google. If we go to Google Translate, uh, And we type in, <clears throat> we'll just use the word, uh, we'll do it the English version here. So I'll switch it around. We'll type in the word north. Tzafon, all right, and Tzafon is the word for hidden. And then we're going to go back down here. Uh, whoop, wrong one. That's where we're working on that video. Where is the pictures at, right? Shoot, did I get it? How did I get on there? Oh, that's, I'm sorry. Here we go. So, all right. Got to find the right one in here. You 
you know, the problem is they don't have the full part of the fragment up here. They have 20 and only a portion of that. And what happens is they normally have more on the scholar side for putting it together. Or either what they're doing is they're taking the, like where you see where we have the missing part of the verse here, they will take it from the Ethiopian uh, scriptures. And I see that's what they did because they don't have the word Siphon in there. They just have going to the edge of the uh, edge there, uh, and of course the Avadin uh, Yabadbin. Uh, those, um, let me see how they translate. I translated a little differently there than what they do, and I keep going the wrong way each time. Where it says they were conveyed over to the north, the edges of the earth. Yeah, that's, there you go. See, see the part in brackets. Now I see what they did. And I was shown great works. I was shown. Great works is the only part that's actually in the fragment there. They're taking it from, uh, in the parentheses there, uh, the edges of the north edges of the earth. And again, it would be Tzitfon would be the word for that north, which is hidden. So in reality, they could have actually gone still to Antarctica, to the South Pole, not to the north specifically, but they were conveyed over to the north edges of the earth. And then he says, I was shown great works. Now, the actual Hebrew that is used there in the works uh, that he is seeing there is of divine works. The word bin right here is just like in Joshua's name. Joshua does, is not called Joshua bin Nun, but rather Yahshua bin Nun. And his name literally, uh, the word bin is divine, like a, like a divine order. Uh, or divine understanding. And in this case here, what, they, what, what Enoch saw was works that were divine, completely out of this world, in other words. And I thought that was very interesting, especially in light of the fact that we know the technology that's hitting, uh, hidden at the Antarctica is beyond anything you could ever even imagine. But we couple that with the fact that there's other things that are said here. He said, I continued watching in my dream, and when behold, one of the four had left and received a command from heaven, and he took all the numerous stars. And by the way, these stars are the fallen angels, whose sexual organs were like those of horses. I found that interesting as well, because uh, the... For example, the reptilians uh, have been said to have sexual organs very much like a human being, but the difference is, is the size of these reptilians are that of a horse. And if you remember the scripture that I was using um, in one of the Old Testament passages where it talks about like, like they were likened to horses, uh, this army that comes upon the earth, but like a horseman they do run. In other words, Bodies like the size of a horse, but yet ran on their legs like a horseman would run. You recall that? I'm sure many of you do. Uh, I forget. Let me see. Let me just pull that scripture up because I hate to say these things, and maybe it's your first time, and uh, uh, and you you don't know. Um, you know, it's like you're like, wow, never heard that before. And uh, then, then I talk about it, and maybe we don't talk about where it's actually at. Let's see. Uh, oh, gosh. Let's see. And maybe they're using that as one word. Let's see if that's the case. Here we go. Nahum, the horseman lifted up both the bride and the sword and glittering spear... I think it is in the book of Nahum, but let me just see. Okay. I apologize. I don't have all this together already like a horseman. Um, they did run. Let me just see if I can pull up. No, that's in Matthew. Um, hmm. Well, I tell you what, this can be a challenge right here. 
Let's see here. Maybe now. Yeah, here we go right here. Joel chapter 2 is where we're at. The appearance of them is the appearance of horses. All right, A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. Uh, the appearance of them is the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Now, you got to remember the appearance right there. Okay, let's let's take it. Let's take it. Let's get into the right areas there. More, okay. Uh, as you see here, also an appearance, the thing seen. All right. So they are. These are these are soldiers, battlemen, but their their structure is that appearance of a horse. In other words, in stature, size, muscular. And if you've ever known anything about uh, the description of reptilians, reptilians are are roughly about. Uh, I think I've been. Uh, oh gosh, what is it? They're about eight eight feet, nine feet tall, something like that. Uh, look like kind of like a lizard head and standing on their hind legs and extremely muscular, I've been told, with the anatomy like that of a human. So if Enoch is writing that their, that their, uh, their anatomy is uh, like that of horses, then it would make more sense. Now you're looking at the same thing we just read there in the book of Amos. And he bound them all hand and feet and hurled them into the abyss, in, in, into an abyss in the earth. Now, I didn't look at that one in Hebrew as of yet, but let me just see. And again, oh, wait a minute. Let's go back because it may not be there. Let's got to check and see if it's in the parentheses or not. Uh, and it is. All right. So it's not going to be in this particular Hebrew uh, portion that we have here. But, uh, but they're thrown into the abyss in the earth there. One of the four went to one of the white bulls and instructed him and built for himself a boat and dwelt inside it. And three bulls went with him in the boat, and the boat was covered and roofed. And above them I was watching, and behold, seven sluices pouring out abundant water over the earth. And behold, the chambers in the interior of the earth were open, and waters began to sprout and come on it. And I continued to watch until the earth was covered by the water. Now, I bring all this out, too, because one of the things that I've learned through the intel meetings that I've been in over the years here is that uh, they've always said that earth was hollow and that on the inside of the earth, uh, not just hollow, but you also have in between the crust and the mantle and going into the inner side of the earth there, we also have huge caverns and things like that. And there are oceans, uh, I've been told about, on the inside of the earth. Oceans that are larger than the ones that we have here on the surface of the earth. So when that was broken up, no wonder why. I mean, because you got to think about it. How much land mass it would take to be able to, I mean, how much water would it take to cover all the land mass on the earth? But when you have that type of volumes of water within the earth, and then that's broken up and comes up, well, now it may, begins to make sense how it could actually happen. And again, we don't we don't only have that, but we're having this amazing, no doubt, these great works or divine uh, uh, of a supernatural origin types of works that he saw there at this hidden place on the earth. And I hear that technology at Antarctica is overwhelming and can't even be hidden any longer. In fact. Actually, I haven't had a chance to look at this yet. Uh, let me just see if it's this one right here. Um, let's see here. This was something, and I have not been able to vet this video. I don't know if it's real or not. Supposedly, this footage from underwater military expedition of a couple of years ago, 400 miles from Antarctica. Read part two of this tweet for more details and explanation. Now, uh, if you want to look... All right, I'm going to back it up here. You can see the diver right there. And that diver, let's say he's roughly six foot tall. And uh, he's going to fit in just on a little short section of the face there. So this statue allegedly being found at uh, the Antarctica area, 400 miles from Antarctica. Uh, gosh, how big would it actually be? 
more than 100 feet tall. Doesn't mean that the humans were that tall, but there again, I mean, who knows? I mean, there are, according to Indian legends, there are those that are called the cloud eaters that were tall like that. Um, so, good question. I don't know the answer to it, uh, but this here, if this video is really, truly real, uh, and I'll try to look into that, see if I can't find out if I get the dog to stop barking here. Uh, charcoal, charcoal, it's enough. Don't do that. So anyway, uh, going back to the, the, the passage here, though. Stop, stop, it's all right, it's all right, stop. Don't do that. Anyway, he built for himself a boat. He's talking about Noah because you have to remember that he was kind of writing in a, in a parable form when he wrote this here. He said, Behold, the chambers of the interior of the earth were open, and the waters began to spout and come out. And I continued to watch until the earth was covered by the water and by darkness and a mist which stood on it. And the bulls were submerging, drowning, and perishing by, by that water. And the boat floated above the water, and all the bulls and the wild asses and the camels and the elephants sank in the water. Now it goes on to say, too, that the earth opened up like fissures, fissures in there, like, you know, huge cracks in the earth. And it began to suck all the water back down. And that's how the water went back down into the earth. The earth was able to re-swallow that water back up. Uh, because otherwise, you'd have to say, where did the water go to after the flood? You know, uh, well, that's exactly the way it's described in the book of Enoch. And I just thought this was fascinating on the two levels there. One, because of these great works. And secondly, uh, because he says that these, these fallen angels there, these stars were actually... Um, you know, they were, they went, they were hurled them into the abyss in the earth. So they're inside the earth, just like the video that I did, uh, six years ago, where I shared that with you, the fallen angels in prison in Antarctica and are still alive. I've actually done another video since then too, um, uh, sharing more information that I've discovered on this. So this will be the third one. Uh, I think it's the third one. So maybe I can make a little, um. Uh, a uh, little list there for people to be able to watch there. Uh, I'll end up, uh, even though this is here on Patreon, I'll load it on Israeli News Live so that, um, you know, maybe in a week or so, I'll create that list and then compile that together for people to be able to see this information. And by the way, I want to thank you guys uh, for, for being here on our Patreon channel and uh, being supportive as you are because, uh, granted, it's your kindness that keeps us going. And, uh, and I wished I did more information for you guys because it is kind of a little exclusive content. Uh, and uh, occasionally there are things, though, that I do go out and release to the public. And it comes mostly off our channel, Stephen Ben Noon, uh, and uh, that where I normally load the videos at. But occasionally I'll make some public as well. Probably about half of them go public eventually so people can also enjoy that too. Uh, but anyway, your support makes a difference. And I do want to say thank you for that. God bless you. And uh, have a blessed weekend with your family, if you're with your family somewhere in the world today. God bless.